Hello. Today we will be using Lagrangian mechanics to find the equations of motion for a falling stick attached to a pivot on its end. We have the equation that we will be using on the top left and the diagram of the stick falling on the right. As you can see, it is attached on at its end by a pin joint and we will be using the angle from the vertical to represent uh, its motion and the stick has a length L. The first thing we do to get the Lagrangian is find the kinetic energy. The stick is rotating about a pivot so it will have rotational kinetic energy. The equation for this is 1 half I omega squared where I is the moment of inertia and omega is the angular velocity. The moment of inertia of a stick, sometimes referred to as a rod, with a constant linear mass density, can usually be looked up in a book, but I will quickly show how we can get this result using the equation for our moment of inertia. The equation for moment of inertia is I is equal to the integral of r squared dm. r represents a vector showing the distance away from the axis of rotation where the mass is. In order to do this integral, we need the linear mass density, denoted by lambda. In this case, for this stick, the linear mass density is always constant, which means that for every small slice taken of the stick, the ratio uh, between the mass and the thickness will always be constant. This means that lambda is equal to dm over dr, which is also equal to m, which is the mass of the whole stick, divided by l, which is the length of the stick. We can make a substitution for dm, so we have the integral in terms of r, and we get that i is equal to the integral of r squared times lambda times dr. This integral is taken from point zero, where the pin joint is, all the way up to length l. Now we can evaluate this integral. We take out lambda because it's just a constant and we are left with the integral from 0 to L of r squared dr. And then we could apply the power rule, where we raise the power by 1 and divide it by that power. After we do that, we get lambda over 3 times r cubed. And again, we're still evaluating it from 0 to L. Making those substitutions, all we're left with is lambda over 3 times L cubed. Lambda is equal to dm over dr, but it is also equal to m over l. So we could substitute lambda as, e as being equal to m over l in our equation. And we get that i is equal to m over 3l times l cubed, which is equal to 1 third ml squared. It is important to remember that omega is just the time derivative of the angular displacement, so omega squared is equal to theta dot squared. This means that our kinetic energy is going to be equal to 1 half times 1 third m l squared times theta dot squared. Then just multiplying out, we get that that is equal to 1 sixth m l squared theta dot squared. Next, we need the potential energy. In this case, it's just gravitational potential energy. Let's look back at our diagram. We need to know where the center of mass of the stick is using the angle. So the center of mass is going to be halfway along the stick, which is L over 2. And in order to get that height, we can multiply that by the cosine of the angle. And with that, we can input that into our equation for gravitational potential energy. And we will get that it is equal to mg 
times L over 2 times cosine of theta. This is equal to 1 half mgl cosine of theta. We now have everything we need to form our Lagrangian. Remember, the Lagrangian is equal to the difference between the kinetic and potential energies. This is equal to 1 sixth ml squared theta dot squared minus 1 half mgl cosine of theta. So now that we have our Lagrangian, we can start taking derivatives. Firstly, we have the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta. The derivative of negative cosine theta with respect to theta is sine of theta. So we know that the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta is equal to 1 half mgl sine of theta. Next, we can do the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. We can use the power rule and we get that it is equal to 1 third ml squared theta dot. Lastly, we can take the time derivative of that and we get that it is equal to 1 third ml squared theta double dot. Here we have the two things that we need to input into our equation. We could just equate the two and we get that 1 half mgl sine of theta is equal to 1 third ml squared theta double dot. Fractions are a bit messy, so I'm just going to multiply both sides by 6, and we get that 3 mgl sine of theta is equal to 2 ml squared theta double dot. Also, as you can see, one of the L's and the M's will cancel out, and we are left with 3G sine of theta is equal to 2L theta double dot. This is a differential equation, and usually differential equations are written in decreasing orders of derivatives, so we can just rewrite it like that. It is also important to remember that theta double dot is equal to alpha, or the angular acceleration. Unfortunately, this differential equation is quite difficult to solve because unlike for a simple pendulum, we cannot assume a small angle approximation because the stick goes from the vertical position through 180 degrees plus all the way to the downward vertical position. So this is the answer for the equation of motion for a stick about a pivot on its end. This is one of two parts. The second part, we will show how to find the equation of motion for a stick, but the pivot is placed anywhere along the stick. So stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching. Bye.